What's going on, everybody? You're back with another episode of Casual Politics. I'm here with two of my brothers. All right. I got my man to my left, Amsterdam. <laughs> Amsterdam Graham, boy. Uh huh. Amsterdam Graham, you know. Uh, just a total package. Nah, not the total package, just one egg short of the omelet. Now I got my main man Quasi over here to my right. I really am trying to figure out how to, to just come compare to what you just did. That was great. I stole that from Little Wayne, uh, bro. But yeah, I'm Quasi, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Uh, it's always a, a, a great thing to be on with my bros, just having a conversation. And look, man, these neither one of these guys are strangers to the Vibe Wichita Network. Man, Trail was here since day one. He was part of the the inception <laughs> the behind the scenes work, yes, you know, a lot sir. of that y'all didn't get to see. And Quali was actually one of our first guests. Man, if y'all gotta if y'all new to the platform, y'all gotta go back and do your archiving and just listen to his story. It's amazing. Um But this is casual politics. So let's get into it, man. You know what I'm saying? We got a the red solos. We had a head start long before we started <laughs> recording. <laughs> Like hours before we started recording. So, Yo, anyway, uh, my man's trail. Do we do the people know where you at right about now? Uh, as far as like where my location, yeah, because most people know, but you know, I'll put my location out there like that. But no, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in Kansas City, I've been out there for a cool little minute, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so. I'm on the Kansas side, but I'm like two streets away from Missouri. So I kind of play both sides. I work in both states. So I see the difference and the similarities too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, so there, there's a long like rival rivalry, I guess you would say friendly rivalry between KCK, KC Mo. Yeah. What, what's that about? What have you experienced? Uh, me personally, like, I mess with people from both sides, but it's just conquering divide. That's all it is. All it is is a, a state street that separates it. It's a little bit more stuff in KC mode, like when you go have fun and a couple clubs, you know, the football team. But Kansas is the is divided. They they have a couple things in Kansas. But it's not as much as Missouri, but Missouri takes it like this is where the KC like I to be honest, I'm not really from there, so I don't get how serious it gets. But uh-huh. people do take pride in it. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I honestly don't understand, but you know, there's probably some stuff I do they don't understand. For sure. And if y'all, you know, like I said before, we had Quasi on and we kind of chronicled his journey. Up until you know graduating college, man, and I really appreciate you for coming through in our early stages. Um, but just go ahead and remind the people where you at right about now, man. Yeah, of course, man, and, and it was definitely an honor to just be a part of that first episode, man. That was really special for sure. Uh, but I'm still based in New York City, so it's been great. And when I'm not in New York City, I'm he's either everywhere else. Yeah, and he's not in New York. He's yeah, everywhere I'm else. Traveling, man. And I'm so. in the United States. This guy is out of here. So that's Quasi <laughs> is truly a world traveler. I mean, just soaking in that life experience. Uh, I I feel like the people that know Quasi live vicariously through him. Got to. I do. <laughs> I do for sure. One hundred. One hundred percent. I know you had to, you you started doing traveling in college. Yeah, school, man. So to be honest, that was really one of the things that kept me in school. So how it actually started for me was one of my professors was an account professor in the summers. Every summer for like the last 10, 12 years, this guy was going to Italy and teaching accounting there. And so he announced it to our class one day, and I was thinking like, yo, we got to go there. We could take classes and like get college credit and be in a different country. Like we have to find a way to do that. So I convinced my buddy to come with me and we did it. Then from there, I was just like, man, there's so much to see. So I've been trying to see as much as I can. And and I'll just be honest, man. Like for me, I I was skeptical because it's like 
a person like me is like I get out of the country. What if they don't let me <laughs> back in? <laughs> <laughs> then was like, then was literally the thoughts that was going through my head. Was like, I don't know if I want to leave the country. Like, one of my good friends, Nate Williams, was like, bro, like, like you're just so close minded. There's so much more out there. I'm like, man, for I'm real. Like, okay. A lot of people don't even get out their city, not even out their street. Like, man, it's- to be honest, traveling helps you understand other people better because you're like, you're saying that wow, like we live a certain way of life here in Kansas, but like a thousand miles away, our values mean nothing to a different city, a different country, a different religion, whatever, like, just because they don't know it. The societal and the social norms are different. Yeah, exactly. They're different. So you're going and you're pretty much representing where you're from, but at the same time, you're le- they're representing their culture to you. And, yeah, like, dope. we're like sponges. Sure. Our minds find things that we're automatically attracted to, and sometimes we don't know we're attracted to things until we're exposed to them. And then we're like, mm-hmm. oh, you know what? We like that. We had no idea until we were exposed to it. <laughs> because you weren't in a, the right environment to come across that. And then there's a saying that says, when in Rome. Do as the Romans do. But I just, please would put an asterisk on that and say, <laughs> leave whatever you do in Rome. Okay. <laughs> the International Vegas. Wow. I mean, I guess that's a good segue because, or a bad segue, it depends on how you look at it, because Italy was one of the hot spots for COVID-19, especially mm-hmm. when it started going mainly global from Asia throughout the world. So, so now I, I got two people in here that are in, you know, relatively hot spots, you know, in New York City and at least for the, the state and, you know, the Midwest in general, Kansas City. Uh, let's get back to trail real quick. Talk about what it's like living there with COVID-19. Uh, all right. So my my daytime job is, you know, I sell supplements and vitamins. So a lot of people that first week, everybody was on edge. Everybody buying all toilet paper and all that stuff. <laughs> so everybody, we never seen, we never seen anything like it. So nobody knows what to do. Then... What I don't, what what I kind of don't understand is, uh, it hit, and then we had the protests, and then we can be around people, like we're around people. Everybody was all scared at first, then the protests. Everybody's just like out now. People are at bars, and you know, not as much, and just a week ago, it's mandatory that everybody. In Kansas, at least on the Kansas side, uh, you have to wear a mask. Right. And see, in my head, so I, where I coach at, we have um, foreign exchange students from China. And so I was concerned about them, more so about, like, if if kids were picking on them about this thing. Yeah. And I got to hear some things, uh, yeah. th- some firsthand experiences and, you know, yeah, secondhand sure. experiences because th- they Skype with their family. Mm-hmm. And I was privy to some things before I got here. And I'm like, well, that's because they live in a communist state, like something like that. Like, it'll never happen here. Yeah. And then lo and behold, it's like, oh. Uh, that's the reason it came here. Because <laughs> I think all of us were thinking the same thing. And we just didn't take any precautions. For, all right. So the funny thing about it. I don't know if it's true, but I made a post on my Instagram because I do I do the food vlog stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you go on my page, you'll see back in January, I made a post like, hey, this chick is eating a bat and that's connected to coronavirus. Nobody. It was just like whatever, because I came across the information. And I was like, all right, let me put this on here. This is interesting. Then about a couple months after that, boom. World's going crazy on fire. Right. Now follow the food. <laughs> <laughs> those those closest to me know that I'm a I'm a Chiefs fan. So uh I mean and and then they won the Super Bowl. Oh man, it was lit. So man, I am I was house. not going to I was not going to miss the parade. I actually was in Miami the week before the Super Bowl and it was just like I I hadn't did a, a thorough job of planning because it's like if you're a Chiefs fan your whole life it's like you know I'm not gonna 
book that and jinx it. Is you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. And it, annually, I do like uh, Art Basel, or mm. I take my vacations in the winter because it get cold here straight up. Mm-hmm. Yes. But when they won, when I was down there, I bought a Super Bowl hats in anticipation of them winning. <laughs> so I got two of those. But anyway, <laughs> nice. anyway, I went to the, the parade. And I I had some insight on COVID-19 and it was just like, it, it hadn't been a big deal here though. And it's like million people yeah. celebrating yeah. in Kansas City. Yeah. The, the weird part is like, for this is okay, for this is not okay. Uh, the- well, this, and, and remember, this is a little bit before it actually, there was an outbreak and it was, a, Kansas City became a hot spot, so to yeah, speak, yeah. whatever. But, you know, go ahead and say what you was going to say. Yeah, so, all right. It it gets – I me, I don't know what to believe. I love basketball. I love the NBA. Even today, I was watching uh, the TBT tournament. I was watching my grandma, and I was like, yeah, they're playing, but they're uh, going to quarantine and everything. She's like, they're bumping each other. Like, they're playing hard defense. They all close. So that's okay, but when we're in the store and I'm right beside you, that's not okay. It's it's just a lot of it's a lot of stuff I don't understand. A lot of variances, with some inconsistencies. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the thing with that is is that okay, we test everybody going into the situation. You test negative, so then it's okay as long as we keep you inside the bubble. But. The, the hard part is controlling the bubble. Well, the thing also is no one's really considered this, but what about test errors? Like, mm-hmm. that's something mm-hmm. finds we know. Or knows. false like, test that's results. That's what I'm saying. But I ain't going to say nothing. You get, like, a false negative or, like, a... I ain't going to tell y'all about that. There, yeah, all you got... And, man, all you got to do is watch. <laughs> Look on Facebook. There's a lot of stories going around about people that... One in particular, they were waiting in line. They said, you know, this is taking too long. They had did the paperwork, though. They did all the preliminary paperwork, and... They went home. And said, it's, it's taking too long. I'm just not gonna take the she test. Came back positive. Came back positive. <laughs> and they're like, "Well, we didn't even take the test. We left before we even took the actual test, even though we did the paperwork." And they got a positive test mail back. So, <laughs> those are some yeah, of the experiences. Some human error, some inconsistencies. So, I, what I mean, so New York City is like kind of notorious right now. I had a cousin that's actually in the Navy that was on the ship that got sent up there. I don't know if you have any like. What what's your first hand experience with it? I'm gonna be honest with it. So I have to backtrack because my experience with COVID was really scary. So I was actually in Bucharest, Romania. A lot of people don't know that. I was there around February, early March. So when Italy started exploding with all these COVID cases, I'm in Bucharest and I'm coming back to New York. And we had to go through Turkey, a couple other countries on the way back to the New York City. The entire time, that process, every country, we, it was intense. Like, even at the gate, they were doing, like, whatever they can to try to test and make sure people are sick or whatnot. It was really intensified. And then I get back to New York, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to quarantine. You know, I'm thinking I'm sick just because I just endured all of that. Um, and then COVID in New York takes off. So I'm literally like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. He went through the gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is terrible. And in New York, it was scary because everyone was in their houses that's for like people, a good man. month, it felt like. Yeah, like no cool. one was like, really, we were ordering food like freshly, like Amazon. Amazon, I've never seen Amazon Fresh like not accept orders. Like in New York, they had a period where they'd say, okay, from like 9 to 11, you could try to order. I'm pretty sure... Our audience don't know what Amazon Fresh is. Do we have that in Wichita? Okay, so Amazon Fresh, I mean, essentially it's just like a online variation of Amazon where you can order food, the groceries, and they deliver it to you. They'll give you like a two-hour time window, and hopefully you're there when they drop off. They'll just ring your doorbell Maybe we drop do. your they're food in, off. They're in partnership with like uh, Whole Foods or whatever. Yeah, they are. Okay, so they probably Jeff do. Bezos owns Whole Foods we now. Pro- we probably do have what that. Does I just own? Yeah. yeah. So. No, you stop. <laughs> Man, I, I don't know if you know either. My, my my cousin AJ is up there too. Yeah, I mean, AJ. You know? Okay, yeah. okay. I, I know, knew AJ's man. up in the area. For sure, so. for sure. Man. Okay, so I mean, like, just let, let's let's think about this. My my two favorite rappers, 
Jay Z, Nas. We know they want respectively, you know, Marcy Queensbridge. Think about a project where you and Marcy projects. You know what I'm saying? And it's COVID nineteen lockdown. Man, stack everybody. If you ever been in a project, bro, everybody stacked. It's just stacked on top of each other, breathing on each other's throats. Like the the Bronx same. took off. The Bronx is probably a huge majority of New York City's COVID cases when the numbers mm. were extremely high. It was really gruesome, and like the stories and like reports that were coming out were not good. I mean, so. We seen videos of like hospitals, body bags, like is that real? Like Oh, that was real. Man. Unfortunately. That was real. Crazy. Yeah, Shay, Shay was out there. Real. Yeah, Shay works though. So Shay's yeah, a, fr- Shay. a mutual friend of ours. She yeah. she's a nurse in New York City. She was in the midst of everything. That's, that like yeah, seeing that she was. like when I'll be talking to her like on the phone, bro, it's it's crazy. Okay. Like, that's a different world. Cause I mean you, you still have people that are like they don't think it's real. They don't think it's real. Man, let it hit close to home. That changed their whole attitude. Because they posting stuff like, uh, I'm trying to see something. Comment if you know somebody that had it. I'm telling you this. Look, when the entire world is hiding and saying you can't come into our country because of this virus, it's real. Like the whole world, normally when things happen, it's one or two countries at a time. The whole world has been stopped because of this pandemic. So this is real. Man. That's heavy, man. That's heavy. Like, I I ain't been out of the country. You haven't been out of the country. Mm -hmm. You got a passport. But essentially, it's rendered useless right now. Essentially. It is useless. It was at one point useless. Like, there were no countries letting anybody in. Like, Honestly, certain countries weren't even letting people out just because. And then on top of that, it's like going back and forth state to state. Certain states now it's like not even now, but like even a little bit before now is oh, if you coming from here, you got to quarantine two weeks before you. Yeah, that's true. I talked about Nas being one. Of, I talked about Nas being one of my favorite rappers and. Uh, around 2010, he dropped a, a project known as entitled. I say known as because it was really it had a title. But <laughs> um, one of the, my favorite lines on that project is, "How far are we really from third world savagery?" They said I seen this on social media. Hey, I don't know who said it, but shout out to him. The United States is a third world third world country with a Gucci belt. I was like, that's big facts. I mean, I live my life like this. Like, we live in a very peaceful society, but we're only a moment away from being at war with one another. I mean, that's pretty realistic, and it's a terrible way to live life, but it keeps me sane and, like, making rational decisions. Okay, so I was looking for a a segue from COVID, because I know everybody's tired of hearing about it, everybody's tired of talking about it, but you can't run away from it. And it's just a reality, whether whether you acknowledge it or not. I understand where people are like, there's conspiracies. The, the COVID in and of itself is not a conspiracy. I don't put it past anybody that they would capitalize on certain things in certain situations. But COVID yeah, in and of yeah, it. Yeah, while your attention, while we looking at this, we're going to backdoor and do what we really want to do. Yeah, but the typical strategy. That's just exactly. elementary strategy. Exactly. Like my son so. today, he's like, twist your fingers up, put them behind your back so I can steal the remote. Same thing <laughs> going on. Same thing going on. You said at any moment we could be at war with one each other, one another. So now let's let's shift the conversation to COVID, from COVID-19 to these protests. Um. You know, in the first episode of Casual Politics, I had AJ Bohan and we were discussing uh, the protests, this uprising going on here in the United States. Um, people have noticed around the world and they've been staging their own demonstrations in respective countries, um, just just showing a sign of unity and support for African-Americans, the American Negro, the black population. Um, 
it it, it kind of it came at a time like on the heels, not even on the heels, in the middle of COVID. And it is a shift in attention. So let's let's talk about, you know, what what did you see in Kansas City? <laughs> you want the rundown? Like just just tell me. I mean like yeah. yeah. Alright, so kind of kind of peaceful. Start out peaceful. But when that sun go down, nah. All them rules out the window on both sides. On both sides. Like you not when the when the sun is up, everybody's chanting and the police are like just sitting there. But sun's down, people throwing stuff, police tear gassing, grabbing, grabbing, <laughs> grabbing people, getting aggressive. Mm-hmm. Like this, the rules are out the window when the sun go down. That's 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 the most I can say. Like no matter what they show you on TV, but the rule the rules are out the window once the sun go down. And you're talking from. Uh, a, a first person experience. I mean, yes, sir. First person experience. I mean, so like it just, for instance, like where was it, one of the protests you attended and just? Uh, we protested on the plaza during the daytime. It was a couple people that got sprayed down. We had, I believe, milk to for the tear gas, and they were like. They, you would have thought we had bazookas. They had like armor, helmets. They were they. I could tell they were just ready to do anything to us protesting. Like they would they would do anything. They would not care because I feel like they're program they're programming people to be used to pro- police brutality. So once it happens, the police like, damn, we can do this. We can get away with this. This is our culture. It becomes part of the culture. Whether you know it or not, we're being programmed. Programmed. We see this stuff. Now when we see it on social media, it's just like, oh, man, that happened. And you go into the next video, see something funny. Then the next video, killing an unarmed black man or black woman or a Hispanic person or just anybody. Like we are being programmed. People don't understand. This is not normal. No, it's it's been happening for years, so it is normal, but it needs to stop. That's crazy. I mean, just from my experience being up there a few months ago for the parade, I was at the plaza and I remember um there's like a bridge, like a walk across bridge, and I remember seeing officers in that bridge. Uh, going back and forth, and I remember seeing snipers on the roof, so I imagine that they use some of the same tactics. Man, you you already know helicopters beating up innocent people, picking on the weak. Like, come on, man! If you didn't have the badge and the gun, it's like treat us. We are human. I know you take your stuff off. I know. I know you take off. The the helmet, the badge, the gun. You have a family, probably. How how would you want your family to be treated? Like it's it's sad. To be honest, it's sad. Mm. What about in uh, New York City? So I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I've been here for most of the protests. Okay. So as I'd have to speak about what I've seen on videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was getting wild. Yeah, it was getting wild in New York, like on both sides. Like I mean, I've always believed like. Which is, I, I know a lot of people would feel the way about me not really attending the protests, but I'm going to be honest, I don't attend protests. I don't mm-hmm. see the, I understand why people protest, but I don't attend them. And the reason why is because cops have the program at night. There is no conversations. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, they just, yeah, it's, they're programmed to exactly. attack, assault, That's remove, yeah. Re- emphasis on remove. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, I'm not trying to create fear in anyone. I think protests are needed and people need to be able to speak what they want to speak i mean especially if you're speaking about a lot of things that basic rights are being neglected or being forced um from people being able to have access to them yeah we have every right to protest well you can't try to give us a short end of the stick and expect for us to not revolt like i mean to be honest if we weren't revolting that i'd be a little sad 
Yeah. Like, cause I mean, like he says, there is an element of programming into it. I mean, but for me, I think there's other ways. Like we all have a, per- we're all here for a reason. Mm-hmm. We, we all have a voice, like whether or not you choose to use it as your personal confliction, but um, like we have a voice and I think there are other ways to like, yeah. to try to use our influence. And I mean, that's sitting in boardrooms, putting money towards things, resources, like there's other ways to try to yeah, combat sure. this. I mean, I'm not saying it's uh I mean, New York has been crazy. Like people really been taken to like protests. Like, yeah, there's protests, but there is also like there's actually a few other murders by police in New York after this. Like, I'm sure those didn't really get the coverage they needed, but like it was really hectic. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the city. But Things seem to have calmed down a little bit in New York, so that's that's good to know. I mean, colloquially, we had this saying that you know death comes in threes, and the the catalyst was you know you had Ahmaud Arbery, Rihanna Taylor, George Floyd, and I'm kind of curious as to, to know like how many countless others have we lost over this course of time? You know, at protests, at night, across this nation just that nameless that will never make the mainstream exactly. you know like i think there's a lot of them for sure exactly. and you know right now there's a push towards uh you know vanessa Guillen. yeah i was i'm glad you brought that up that's brutal that's, she's on base working like that's brutal yeah it, some of this stuff just leaves you speechless literally speechless what's the uh Vardosta? In Georgia, yeah. oh man, that was that messed me up, man. Like that's. Go ahead, uh, elaborate on the story, if, just you know, for people that may not. Uh, uh I don't know everything. I, I'm trying to. I can't believe I can't remember his name. Oh, are we talking about the the young the young wrestler? Yeah. See, this is this. Removed oh my! Yeah. See, this is a this is a uh, an old story. That's just been being recirculated now yeah, because during the investigations, this climate, you know, what I mean, this climate is making these conversations more acceptable, more open and bringing them to the forefront. So where things have been swept under the rug, man, thank God for people that have been doing a due diligence and saying, look, I refuse to let you be forgotten. I refuse to let this go unanswered. I refuse to let these people go unaccounted for. And, you know, a lot of things being brought to the light because people are being emboldened. You know, it's it's kind of like uh, in this under this presidency, certain things have been in embo- certain factions have been emboldened to have a voice where. For a long time, it has been frowned upon certain behaviors, certain opinions. And now for whatever reason they feel emboldened to speak out. Well now it's like that counter. It was it was the counter to Obama. Now it's the counter to some of the people that feel comfortable under the Trump administration. And you know it's kind of it's kind of a a beautiful thing so to speak. I think it's just bringing us closer collectively, you know. I feel like humanity, like we have so far to go to collectively care about one another. I and mean, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of sad, but like we are all the same people, you know. The only thing that's different is sometimes our skin color, but mostly where we come from. And that's the only we all care about the same things intrinsically. Like when you look down at the 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 deeper concepts of things, you know, we want to make sure that we we take care of our family. We can be seen as someone people want to like to know we all care about the same things but for some reason there's social things or there's things that are passed down some uh, injustices or some terrible mindsets that are passed down and it's i mean unfortunately it's creating a rift that really shouldn't be there you know it's it's, it's easier for me to say on this and then for all of us to figure that out but it's my hope that we get there you said it's power Power. Nobody wants to give up position, especially if it's uh like handed down from generations. Why would you want to give up your seat at the table? I think that is a point that if you get on Facebook and you see so many debates, I say Facebook a lot, 
because that's that's become like a political forum. You know, you can't you don't really do it on Instagram because it's just pictures. Twitter is more like who's the wittiest comeback or whatever. Nah, shout out to Twitter. <laughs> Twitter, I love. Uh, that's Twitter's that's a like level. a whole lot of shade, <laughs> but you know, you you Facebook is where these conversations take place because for one, we don't we don't sit down with one another. We don't conversate. We, it's a whole lot of text, but you know, people are in the comment section going at it and I respect the honesty. Like one of the interviews that's really popular right now is uh, Charles Barkley mm -hmm. with his project. I don't, I forget the guy's name, and I, I honestly don't want to give him more publicity anyway. So I'm glad I can't remember it. But I respect his honesty because a lot of people will say, "Oh, racism doesn't exist. Oh, it's all in your head." Oh, you know, they'll pretend to be willfully ignorant. But there's this guy that Charles Barkley interviewed, and he's just like, yeah, you know, white privilege is a beautiful thing. You know, we dominated this, the West, and yeah. I want a white dominated world for my grandchildren. And it's like, it's kind of refreshing to actually hear that honesty. Yeah, what, so, side, what side you on? Pick a side. Yeah, I, I mean, I tell at. people, shit, uh, like, look. I'm not going to respect you because you're racist, but at least I know you're racist. <laughs> like, at least I know. The thing about us being in the Midwest is that there's people that feel like that way, but when you call them a racist, they, they're they offended because it's like a, a stigma attached to the word. When you go to the South, it's, exactly. it's no secret. It's exactly. like a prideful thing. That's why, that's why I do good with racism. Like, bro, like, out here, that's what I, that's what I tell people in the South. You racist, you racist, like, whatever. And I get on with my day. Out here, people try to, like, hide it or try to make it seem like they're not racist. But if you're racist, like, I don't encourage it, but be who you are. Yeah, I can't force you to like me just because you automatically don't like someone that looks my skin color. I'm not going to. That's a waste of my energy. Like, of course, and there's moments where people cross the line and you see people coming up and, forcefully approaching people or attacking people because they are black or in some other minority. Like that's when things cross the line for me personally. Yeah. And like a lot of what I see is people there's like really just being petty. Like you have the black community that's making these posts and that's trying to appeal and make like just a genuine effort to appeal. And then you see like, witty comebacks for instance we had a, a young lady in atlanta a, a young girl that was shot by protesters um a situation that got out of control but you'll see underneath the comment section oh i thought black lives matter you know yeah, yeah, for sure. and it's like this kind of witty thing oh you know if you know why would black lives matter don't matter to black people it should matter to black people if Black Lives Matter. Why you? Every, everybody can talk that talk on the internet. Like, yeah. Internet, I'm, that's a safe place. Everybody can say what they want on the internet. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I this is that. political conversation, so I'm going to mention this. Just the other day, a senator actually sent an, an email angry to the, the NBA commissioner, essentially saying, why are you guys doing this whole, like, pro-black names on the jersey in this tourney that's going to happen? Why don't you guys do like support the troops or like pro cops as well? And someone was not happy with that, which I I'm not happy with that. Like you know what the real reason yeah, is for the bold. moment. I mean, so so let's say how about you you support cops by uh, funding? Okay, a lot of we we talk about support in the sense where you lend a a cosign. I support this. A you, pat on the back. No, I, I say it out loud. So that is support. Nah. But support is really economic because exactly. we live in a capitalist society. Big and I, I know quasi, quasi is the money man. So hold on before you jump in and, and, and hit this home run. But the NBA has police escorts. You know, they hire these people to, you know what I'm saying? That's, that is support, financial support. The troops, you know, you sing the national anthem before games. That's supporting, you know, the troops. Uh, 
the NFL had a whole thing about pay patriotism. So, but go ahead. What were you going to say? I mean, I was essentially, I guess, going to just say, like, it was interesting that he, the senator, a senator said this, you know. Um, I, I thought the comment was very interesting, and it just shows you, like, people want to be blatantly racist, they will find ways to do it. And it's interesting because you also see on the backside people that are support, supporting minority people are being punished for it. It doesn't make any sense. Like, you're doing all these... I told my grandma essentially what you see companies doing the last few weeks. They're scrambling to create some makeshift support for diversity. And it's like, that's not real. Well, some of them are real, but the good majority of it is just surface level. It's like makeup, you know? You just put it on and try to make yourself look nice, and then... Hey, look, I dead serious, before I left the house, she was like, if y'all have a platform... I need y'all to use that platform and tell them all this stuff they doing, we ain't asked for that. All that singing the Black National Anthem, <laughs> we didn't ask for that. We want real change. She said, make sure you bring that up. So I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, let's, let's talk about that. So we have, we're, they've been painting Black Lives Matter on the street. They've been uh, uh, white people that do black cartoon character voices. They like, oh, I can't do this character anymore. No, we want them people arrested. We want justice. I don't care about that. Yeah, I, I we care more so about don't. I mean, don't hide your purses when we walk in the store. We're just, look. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Like we we really just want to be able to walk into a store <laughs> and like be comfortable. Like, oh, not all of us are bad because our skin color is black. Like. The reality is a lot of us work great jobs and we want to do something with our, our lives. And another thing is give us an opportunity. Man. Like you say you want to do your painting our streets Black Lives Matter. But if you look at the opportunities that we need to really bring income and resources into our communities, we need venture capitalists. We need black companies funded. You have millions of dollars. You have multiple companies, but they're not being funded because they're black owned. That's not right. You care about us. Forget painting our streets. But they don't care Put the about money us. into our companies. Help bring those dollars into our communities where we can give better resources. I mean, one of my favorite pictures is this kind of like a, a book, and you can see them all looking out of a cell, and one person can pretty much see out and see the beautiful view of the cell. The other people kind of on stagnated books. Oh, I mean, yeah, really, yeah, what that is is just a, is a stack of just saying, indicating like, I mean, the reality is minorities are at a disadvantage out of the gate. Like, we have resources that we, there are resources that exist that we should have in our communities and we don't, and we don't even yeah. know about them. And that's you, you in know itself the is sickening. Is, is media, man. Media is powerful. That's where the money's at. That's where the mind control is at. The media, the television. And you know who controls the television? <laughs> Come on, man. That's heavy stuff, man. Let me let me be quiet. Nah, I mean, ah, that, nah, that, I think that's, that's what the, the platform yeah, is that's for, what the man. platform is for, you know. I think this let is me the, be quiet, man. that's one of the things. So I've actually, a lot of people don't know this. I've been actually, um, like I said, I, to me, I think there's other ways to give back to the community. And for me, my that has been giving my finance knowledge away. So I've actually been hosting some trading seminars. I, you know, the numbers on Robinhood have actually increased since COVID. So I've been trying to make sure that as many black people as I know, like, can join these videos, understand how to research companies, and actually, if you're gonna use Robinhood, learn how to make money instead of just putting your money and losing it. And so you mentioned it. So just tell the people like what what it is you you do per se, or what your major is, or yeah. So I uh, I am actually an investment specialist. So I, I work with investment bankers, essentially people who raise money for corporations all day. For sure. Um, and I work for them. Those are my clients, and I I work in New York financial district. Um, and I'm working to be either a venture capitalist or a private equity uh, manager. So finance and understanding companies and understanding how companies can impact communities. That's something that I, I actually care about. Man. So we get back to the root of the black plight because it all started with this country being built on free labor and just a head start for some, uh, you know. Have you seen that video? 
it's like it's a track race. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I I need to that's that's a dope video. That really puts a lot of stuff in perspective. Yeah. Like for real. A head start for some. Yeah. No retribution for those that put forth the effort. You know, when uh I remember the Obama election and it was uh who who was the guy that was running it? He was the, the Republican candidate from Arizona. Um, um McCain. Yeah. Um God rest his soul, but he said something along the lines that America wasn't built on shortcuts. And I said, (laughs) this is some of the biggest shortcuts in history. I, yeah, (laughs) I I was like, I can't believe he said that. I mean, I I can, but it's just like, really? It's just ironic. And some of the most like associated American values just this is just inconsistent with What's actions really the reality the actions the yeah of the government of the nation as a whole and in the words of Martin Luther King we just want you to be true to what you said on paper that's two episodes in a row I said that yeah so there's actually an I can think of the name of this book but it's a uh, an author her name is Jill Lepore she's like an American history professor she wrote uh, this book called these American truths I think that's what it's called essentially she uses the whole book to pretty much talk about the forming of the United States, forming the Constitution, all of these things, and how racism actually played a crucial part and how they chose certain words. So a lot of the disparity and stuff, a lot of people don't even know. Like, like man, black people were kicked out in the Constitution. Yo, they intentionally did like that. They, they say human and man, but they didn't look as black people as human and man. Yeah, like, three-fifths of person. There was a reason three-fifths <laughs> of person made the Constitution. So... And I mean, even with policies, like you you go back to the crack cocaine, like that was intentionally put into our communities or you look into the the, the prison systems. Why are prisons trading on the stock market? Like that makes no sense. That's all. That's all. That's all. Mama Jean on like uh, Michael Jordan. It's heavy. But they, they, they found out that was a different person. But um, that's not Michael Jordan. Jordan? Not 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 that they found out that was a different person. But. We we oh. talk about things like we talk about things like three fifths. Um, what what was it? Is it was it the right to vote? Was it was it every fifty years that Congress has to re ratify it? It comes before I, I forget which one it was specifically, but yeah, I don't really. But know it's like hey hey the specifics when we if if we want to talk about making real change and real progress. Let's get in on papers. Let's let's let's, let's, let's get start that paperwork redone. Let's start let's with something that as simple as saying, okay, we have to revisit this thing every fifty years for basic human rights for Black people. Let's let's say, okay, uh, the next time this comes up, we're just gonna say we vote it, we approve it, and it's done. It just needs to be a permanent amendment, and we don't have to revisit it every fifty years. If you really, if you really, you know, about that life. I, I, you know, I think we have to do a better job of fighting for ourselves. You know, I, I think protests and everything are great, but we also have to understand, like, the game is played in courtrooms. It's played in yes, sir. Senate chambers. And, yes, it is very difficult for us to get into those rooms and to, to stay in those rooms. But that's where we need to be. Unfortunately, I hate that's where we need to be. We need to find ways to progress and i think there are plenty of us with opportunity and resources that many of us don't have we need to start using those positions a lot better uh you know i I appreciate athletes and musicians and whatnot but you guys have access to resources the majority of our our kin folk don't have so we need you to be representing us you know i think lebron does an okay job of that and he has things that i don't really like or respect that he supports but everyone is everyone you know uh, but I think he's doing a good job of kind of representing that type of person that I'm talking about, you know, and that that's something that I hold myself accountable with as well. I think that it's important. Like, you, we we have to also find other ways to get a seat at those tables because that's where the real changes are occurring. Well, let's bring up another athlete um, by the name of Malcolm Jenkins. Uh, I don't know if he's still with the Eagles, but he kind of he was kind of the face of a deal that was brokered with the NFL. Uh, he got a lot of flack because he wasn't one of the leading faces in that effort. You know, everybody knows that Colin Kaepernick was a leading face. Uh, I believe Eric Reed was a teammate, uh, Kaepernick at the time. 
and supported them and continued to play. Um, but there was some negative things said about Malcolm Jenkins, but I feel like his heart was in the right place because he, the deal that he brokered was that funds would go towards initiatives. The problem was he settled for too small of a number. So it was like, okay. it, it was like good idea, poor execution, you know, yeah. because of how big an industry that the NFL is. And they quote unquote nonprofit. What? Yeah, when what? it comes to nonprofit, I'm always Come weary on, because I understand the, the backdoor accounting and to what actually not a lot of nonprofits Man, are used for. That's. So that's the type of stuff I'll be looking. looking I know you used to watch American Greed. I know. Ah, <laughs> hey, chill out. <laughs> I mean, hey man, I just like having knowledge about how this world works, like really works. Yeah, I mean, I always tell people like, man, the, the world is a sea, and you could be a certain type of fish, but there are definitely sharks, and <laughs> you need to understand how the sharks play. Exactly. That's not like big it. facts. That's all, that's man. That sounds like some player talk right there, man. That's great, bro. That's hey, the type of conversations we be having, man. And that's, that's one of your OG uncle sayings right there, man. <laughs> for real, for real. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, kind of fast forward to like the present. Some these uh, some of these protests have died down. It's died down a lot here in Wichita, but in bigger cities, they're actually kind of still going. Mm-hmm. It's just that media attention is shifting. What because you, they need us to be scared of COVID again. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's also a st- strategic thing, you know. I, from a Machiavellian point of view, if you want to get rid of something, stop covering it. No attention. Yeah, yeah give it and, no attention. Uh, what? They all right. They said Black Lives Matter spikes up. Every time, maybe it might be the coverage of it, but before, before the uh, presidency and stuff, I think it's June. Don't quote me because I ain't do no research coming here. I just hop hopped in. But in June, Black Lives Matter spikes up off the charts. Hmm. Like something always happens around that time. So oh, I'm an gonna, election year. I'm going to be yeah. honest with statistics, you guys. Statistics. I don't trust Black Lives Matter. I know a lot of people. As an organization. As an organization, of oh. course. As an organization. What people need to do, what we need to do, what I need to do also is research. Let's see the names behind the organizations. I don't care who. It, I want to know everybody in that building. So actually, if you go to blacklivesmatter.com and then they. They have actually a donate link. Click the donate link, and then it'll show you the company that's kind of registering the donation link. Google them, and, and they have yeah. on the internet who all their yeah. it's resources some, it's, go it's some to. some power plays being played right now. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, right so you be it's weary like of some of these. A lot of uh, people, for sure, are opportunists, so be weary of opportunists, the people who are seeming like, uh, well, I mean, scripture says it the best. You know, it's some people are well, coming up here to yeah, light, yeah, and they sure. really dark. What, what, so I, what I'm dark. gonna say, and this is all I'm gonna say to whoever's listening to this: when you have money, you can buy a name. That's all I'm gonna say. When you have the money to do it, you can buy the name, and then with the name, you can do whatever you want to do with it. So, I mean, we talking about finance now, and financial freedom um I'll, we have an election year this is an election year and one of my points that i try to make all the time is that a lot of people vote for in the general election for the president that's every four years right we understand that there's there's other elections that make sense that you that you really should concentrate on which are the call it midterms um you know so but for me it's like those general elections every four years, midterms or what, two years, you have some staggered elections in there, like city council and everything. But that's one day. And what we do throughout the entire year kind of dictates and really shapes our exactly. yeah, hey, why, our why, communities. Why, why, why are you saying that? I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh-huh. And that's where it starts. We need to start where we live 
to influence. Exactly, exactly. That's what I meant by exactly. we need to be having seats at the table. Exactly. Like exactly. we need to we need to be attending these city council me- meetings. Not all of us, but like nah, we, all of if, if we can. Yeah, we I mean need. all of us if we can, you know. But some people don't really feel like politics is something they're comfortable. Man, with or the or the simple fact that you know a lot of people just can't afford to not work on a Wednesday morning. Yeah, exactly. True. So you, you have to also. think about how they're, these meetings and stuff, these important meetings are set up. When are they occurring? Some of the times, like you said, they're occurring in the morning. You got to be at work. Yeah, so. That's true. And, I mean, another thing that I like, I, I really try to encourage is that we vote with our dollars. So it's oh, like full it, agree. what you were going about as, you know, the organization and the people behind the Black Lives Matter organization is just like... The, even the corporations that we spend with, you can look online and you can figure out who they support and exactly. as far as candidates that's, and yeah, policy. I, yeah. I mean, I hate going yeah. back to sports, but this is a perfect example with the Redskins. Like FedEx was like, hey, like we were taking away our investors and we we're taking away our funding that we give you if you don't change the name. A few years ago, the owner said, we are never changing this team's name. Right. Now that they're losing money, they're changing yeah, the you name. Hit, you hit them pockets. That is change that attitude. That's absolutely a, a perfect example. So it's like if you believe in what the, the you know the CEO of FedEx is saying, or like, hey, I will send my package via FedEx, and you know it doesn't. <laughs> I know firsthand that they don't have height restrictions and size restrictions and stuff like that. But that's beside the point. I I support your cause, therefore I support your company. And that's why I try to I try to tell people this is how you vote with your dollars. Mm. Besides the fact that we really need to build a a, a black economy, because I fully agree. I think we we and I've, I've thought about that a lot. Why haven't we attempted an economic to build base. another black Wall Street? I mean, we have places like I'm looking at Atlanta. I hope. I hope to God that you know they don't try to sabotage that. Yeah, that looks um, beautiful. You can see they looks try to. Beautiful. Hey, COVID, y'all come out first. Man. Yeah, it's a lot they from the venture capital space boy. that I've seen in Atlanta. Atlanta is growing for sure. You know, um, and I think that they are a model, and I think we should look to them and just adopt some of their like Hollywood. You know, just adopt some of what helped them become what they were. Like, for instance, outlawing loan sharks, you know, putting a cap on the loans. Yeah, home mortgage loans. They really historically like gotten blacks because they you walk into a bank for a loan that you should be able to get access to. And they're like, ah, you're black. So this person's automatically going to be on this tier no matter what. Like you could have great credit or whatnot. Like, and specifically, it, they, they legally can't do that. It's what zip code you live in, yeah, which is the process known as redlining. Exactly, Our redlining red is the lines. the actual tactic that they're using. So, man, that trickle down, the trickle down effect, like that sucks, bro. Like for real, like, that trickle sucks. down economics. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it just trickles down to then it's like you set back your kid, like you said, the head start type stuff. Yeah. That's why I work hard. I, I, my grandma and I were actually having this conversation the other day. Actually, she, I guess she feels like I could be doing more, and like I would tell her the truth. Like I'm working to do as best as I can. Like reality is like I'm gonna be honest. I've thought about just going to a third world country, which I have plenty in mind, where I could just <laughs> spend the rest of my days and just write. Yeah. At the same time, like I don't want anybody. If you listen to this, man, don't stress out. Life is hard, but. Live life, enjoy time with the people that you love. Do what puts a smile on your face as long as you ain't hurting nobody. Yeah, I mean, use your voice. You're here for a reason. So use your voice. You have a purpose. Use it. Like, maybe you're not impacting the world, but you can impact your community. You can impact your family, and that's what matters, you know. So use your voice for something. I love it. Use your voice, and that's what I'm trying to do. That's what we're trying to do on this network. And I, I feel like that is the perfect way to wrap this show up. You know, we, we've been all around the world. <laughs> and we just bring it back home. Ain't no place like home. Hey, where? You, yeah, definitely. No place like home. Quasi, do you want the people to follow you on social media? 
Yeah, go ahead and uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, my IG is Kwasi Jue. That's K W A S I J O U E R. And maybe they can like hit you up about some of those seminars that you got going. Yeah, on Yeah, feel free to follow me, DM. I have a, a open profile. I mean, I am an investor on in the profile, so feel free to to reach out and DM. Trail, where can they find you? <laughs> hit me up on IG, uh, Amsterdam Ground. A M S T E R D A M G R A H A M Amsterdam Grim. <laughs> Hit me on IG on Instagram. Like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm gonna start posting a little bit more on Instagram. So that's where y'all can follow me. At. What about what's some of the projects you got going on that you want to put? Oh, man, you gonna let me plug? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's that time of the day. <laughs> All right, what y'all can do? Uh, I got I got my food vlog, got that coming. Uh, COVID kind of pushed it back. How let me? I got some Venice T-shirts that I'll be selling, and uh, you know I'm I'm learning about the Bitcoin. Me and my brother, like he put me on a little bit of game. I got some other people putting me on game, and uh, shout out to my boy Spencer. He in Singapore. Me and him be buying Bitcoin, so you know that's that's kind of what I got at the moment. For sure, for sure. Y'all know what it is. I'm your man, LT. This was another episode of Casual Politics. You tuned in to the Vibe Wichita Network. Love y'all. Stay tuned.